Welcome to another Bible study in our Book of Acts weekly Bible series. Today we are going to look at True Christ is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. What is the name of that person by whom the whole world has received forgiveness of sin? How does the entire earth receive forgiveness of sin? Today you are going to learn who that person is, how it happens, and the difference between forgiveness of sins and the remissions of the remission of sin. Last week I started Barnabas and Paul's first missionary journey. Now let's continue on that journey. Paul and Barnabas had left Perga in Pamphylia and now they are in Antioch in Pisidia. Let's start the scripture reading now. And I'm at Acts 13, starting at verse 14. But when they departed from Perga, they meaning um, Barnabas and Paul and the, 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 the whole contingent of believers, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. This is like whenever time I go into a new town or district, I'm always searching for the church that I go to. Where is that church? It's the same thing Paul did, they were doing here. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men, of, ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and he that fear God, give audience. Observe here that Paul begins to assume his role as the chief speaker of this of the team. He started his preaching with some basic Jewish history. Then he introduced Jesus through the lineage of David. So let me go back to the scripture. He says. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. So they were in the wilderness for forty years, Israel was. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterwards, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. So, so Saul reigned for 40 years. And when he had removed them, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave their, their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. And this is a figure of Christ, because Christ is going to come through the lineage of David. Oh, and he will fulfill all the will of the Lord. Of this man's seed had God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Paul introduces Jesus to the people in the synagogue or church. When John had first preached before his coming, the coming of Jesus, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, John revealed to the people that he was not the Christ, but that he would come after he is gone. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. We see a better explanation of this in John 1 verse about 19 to 22. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? 
So he was new on the scene and he was doing stuff. He was baptizing all the people and preaching. And they weren't sure if he was the Christ. So they sent a um, delegation to him to ask, who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? That prophet? Meaning Jesus. And he answered, no. Then said they unto him, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What says thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And that is John 1, 19 through to 24. So we observe that he informed the people that Jesus is coming after him and that he wasn't the Christ. Then Paul tells them this same word that John and all the prophets spoke concerning Jesus Christ. That same word I now speak to you. He says, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear God, to you is, is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. So Paul is saying, because you didn't know Jesus and you didn't know the scripture, you have fulfilled what the day said, the scripture and the prophet said in condemning Jesus Christ. I'm taking a brief break right here. If you are new to this channel or have not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a few seconds to do so. Then turn on notification. Just hit that bell icon and then choose all. That way you won't miss any of my content when I post. YouTube will notify you. So, and don't forget to like this video that you're currently watching. And I want to thank you for showing your love. Now let's resume today's Bible study. God raised Jesus from the dead. Paul continues, And though they found no cause of death in him, meaning Jesus, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. He clear unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children. How in that he had raised up Jesus again, as it's also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, no, no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he said also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption but he who God raised again saw no corruption but be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin and what Paul means here is that through this man, that's Jesus Christ, is preached unto you. How? Through his name. So through the name of Jesus Christ is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. The man that Paul preached about is Jesus. Through Christ and him alone could we enjoy forgiveness of sin. 
our sins are not forgiven when we attend Mass. Neither are they cancelled when we confess to anyone besides, besides Jesus Christ. He is the only one who has power on earth and in heaven to forgive our sins. Now, I don't want us to confuse the forgiveness of sins with the remission of sins because there is a bit more than a bit there's a whole lot of confusion on the internet where this is concerned because you have people who are teaching this who have no knowledge of god and christ they're not even christians they're just writers and they're just writing what they think is right they are related the the forgiveness of sins and the remissions, the remission of sin, they are related, but they are different. To, to forgive is to treat or to see a person after a person has sinned against God. It's how God sees that person. He sees that person as if that person had not sinned. So that's forgiveness. Remission, on the other hand, though, is a different matter. It deals with our state. When our sins are remitted, they are removed. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. That's, that was a part of Daniel's prayer in Daniel 9.9. 9. Jesus reminded and instructed his apostle that this is written and that after his resurrection, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Apostle Peter did this on the day of Pentecost and by him, meaning Christ, Jesus, all that believe are justified from all things from which they could not be justified by the law of Moses. And that's Acts 13, 39. Beware therefore, this is Apostle Paul continuing to address the people. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, he despisers and wander and perish, for a work, a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Acts 13:41. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Um, I'm going to make another damn diversion. I have plans to set up a membership site. This is where I shall create premium content to teach others how to understand the Holy Bible better. If you are interested in this, I would be delighted if you would complete a very brief survey. I shall leave a link to it in the description below this video. So, all right, and let's get on with our Bible study. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuading them to continue in the grace of God, Acts 13, 42. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. That is awesome. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. This is similar to what the sorcerer Elamas did when he perverted the right ways of the Lord. This is what this, these religious people are doing. Very identical to what Elemas did. I did a video on that and I'll leave a link to it in the description below this. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. He is addressing the Jews who were contradicting and rebutting his word. But seeing he put it from you and judge yourselves unworthily of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So anytime anyone rebuts and rejects the word of God, that person is saying, I am not worthy of everlasting life. Wow. 
For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Acts 13.47 So this is the point when Paul, Paul's ministry as the apostle to the Gentiles was officially launched right here. Because he just told his Jews, no, at this point, I'm going to the Gentiles to teach them because the Lord has sent me to them. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. So now you start to see what I was telling you about that Paul is now promoted over Barnabas. Cause you see now instead of the scripture saying Barnabas and Paul, now it starts to say Paul and Barnabas. Um, the order is important because it indicates to us when things have changed and it has changed here. Remember when, when in the synagogue, when the men are and said, men and brethren, have you got any word of exhortation? Paul took the lead and stood up. Right. It started there. You start to see the difference in Paul's operation there. But they shook off the dust. This meaning Paul and his contingent. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Acts 50, 13, 52. Now, that's basically the end of the scripture reading. There is no other person or leader who could forgive our sins except Jesus Christ. Yes, no other person. The Pope cannot forgive our sins. Only God can forgive our sins. Yes, only God. Your, earlier I said Jesus, you know, but there is no contradiction here. For this reason, God became a man. He became Jesus Christ. See, I'll tell you. And die in our place. God became a man. That's why only Jesus can forgive sin. Because he is God. <laughs> when God forgive our sins, he sees and deal with us after the sinful deed as if we never sinned that's forgiveness so so forgiveness <clears throat> is from its perspective but this is not automatic forgiveness is not automatic when we sin we don't automatically get forgiveness um, from God no the scripture says in John 1st John 1 8 if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, the Lord forgive us if we confess our sins to him. So forgiveness is how the Lord sees us. It's, it's seen from his point of view. On the, on the other hand, remission explains our state. Because when our sins are remitted, we are clean from them. They are removed. How could we enjoy the remission of sins then? When we believe in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember this, uh, the, the topic is, Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. Now when we believe in the name of Jesus, we enjoy this. So let me get, get, get your scripture. Acts 10, 43. To him give all the prophets. Him meaning Jesus. Witness that through his name, whosoever believe in him shall receive remission of sins. So in order for anybody in the world to receive remission of sin, they must believe in the name of Jesus. But that is not the end of the story. If we believe in the name of Jesus, then we will obey his apostles, his 12 leaders. 
We can't claim to believe in him, yet we ignore and disregard the people he has sent with his word to us. And those are the leaders. So we get all the word in the New Testament from the 12 leaders of Jesus. So if we're going to disregard what they are saying, how can we say that we believe in Jesus when Jesus sent them? Consequently, Apostle Peter provides us with the rest of the information concerning the remission of sins. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2.38 So we believe in his name. And then we get we repent and then we get baptized in his name. And if we do that, we will enjoy remission of sins. It tells us there. Finally, if you don't believe in the name of Jesus, you will not take this last step. Meaning, you will not get baptized in his name. If you don't believe in him, you will not do that. But if you believe in him, you will gladly get baptized take on his name to you because the only way to take on the name of Jesus is to be baptized in his name have you been baptized in the name of Jesus if not your sins are not removed even though Christ died for them yes if you have not taken on the name of Jesus if you have not believed repent and baptize in the name of Jesus your sins remain the scripture just shows shows us that the scripture, the Bible, just shows us that. If we have not done that, our sins remain because we have not obeyed him. In closing, find a church that baptizes in the name of Jesus and get baptized. I mean, when the, when the baptizer is immersing you in the water, he shouldn't say in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, or in the name of the Holy Ghost. He should call that name. And that name is Jesus. So he should say, I baptize you, your name, in the name of Jesus. It's very important. The scripture says, if we never get baptized in the name of Jesus, our sins remain. They are not remitted. And remitted means removal. Thank you for your time. Blessings of the Lord are on you. And it will wills. Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Bible study.